Hello, students interested in Ursinus and your families. Uh, because we can't meet in person, I have this narrated slideshow for you. I'm Dr. Ellen Dolly. And there's a, I even gave you a picture so you can see what I look like. I'm the uh, coordinator for Health Professions Advising at Ursinus College and also a professor of biology. Ursinus is a place for students. It starts and it ends with our students. And that's how this PowerPoint is going to run through. So I'll have some uh, notes about some of what our students have been doing at the beginning. And then in the middle, there'll be a bunch of informational slides. And at the end, they come back to our students. I won't really be talking through all of this or have much to say through all of this. Um, I'll let you to go through at your own pace. Um, here's our some of our recent graduates to give you an idea of what they what they're like and where they've gone. So we advise every type of health professions from the two types of medical schools, MD and DO. And you can see the list there it goes through everything. And these are some fairly recent students gone on to some very nice institutions. While you're here at Ursinus, um, our strength for you is, is advising and allowing you these opportunities and having um, relationships with our students so that we, we know what you need and know what you should be doing and help you through those things. So and the spirit of exploring opportunities at Ursinus, I've given you some examples here at the top There's a group of Bonner students and they are students dedicated to service and this is a recent a uh, fairly recent trip to Jamaica, a service trip. And there's two of my students who've gone on to medical school, Stephanie Hawkins, Penn State Hershey, and Devayu Parikh, who went on to Jefferson Medical College. Min Sun over there at the top is last year's summer fellow in ethics, and she's interested in dental school, so she's now applying. But her summer fellow project, which is a research project, was not about dentistry as a science, but the ethics behind offering care to people. In the middle is one of my old students, Kevin Hugheim, who's now been accepted to the Kansas City University of, of Medicine, and he was a wrestling athlete. Many of our pre-health students are athletes. Jessa Vedekath, who is now at Drexel University College of Medicine, was an off-campus researcher at Fox Chase Cancer Center, and I finally, I've given you Jessica Saunders and Annie Copera when they were doing summer fellows in biology, where Jessica was an incoming freshman and Annie was her mentor in our program for, uh, for science students trying to enter into the field. And I also wanted to say that we um, know that the pathway to health professions isn't always a straight one. And so that even when students have graduated and gone on to some career and decide do they want to go to medical school, they come back to us for help. And I've given you two examples here. Frank Search, who was a uh, business and economics and biochemistry double major. And he worked after graduation for three years in the business world before matriculating at Rutgers uh, Robert Wood Johnson Medical School. And now he's within something called a program for, for global scholars. And I've given you a uh, title for a, a paper that he wrote as an undergraduate. And you can see it's, it's a technical art article about business. Another one is Anahi McIntyre, who graduated in 2014. Um, she was a biology and Spanish double major. And I've given you a little picture of her at the left as a student on the volleyball team. But the other thing that was influential for her is that she spent uh, a semester abroad in Chile, uh, Chile as a Spanish major. And after completing or after graduating from Ursinus, she went on to do a master's at Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. And that is where she has matriculated in their medical program. Both these people um, were gone for a couple of years from Ursinus and, and sent me an email and asked, can you now help me? And I was happy to be able to help these people. So you can see our, our message here is we want our students to get what they, what they want out of life. And we're here to help them get those, um, reach those goals. And we're here to also make your college experience a very rich college experience. 
And so I want to also share this email I received on April 4th uh, from a student who had graduated in 2017, Aaron Nelson, who told me that he's been accepted to PCOMS Medical School. And I think wrapping up what I'm trying to say here, our advice, our assistance, our committee letters, and our support, which, was, which helped him reach what he wanted to do. So Ursinus is about community and it's about nurturing our students. Specifically for health professions, we have a pre-health professions advising committee, which I am the chair for. And here's a list of the members. Mostly they're uh, biology professors, but there's HEP, which is health and exercise physiology um, and chemistry and, and neuroscience are involved in being on this committee. M many of our students are health are, sorry, our science majors, and that's why we have so many science professors on our committee, but we're not limiting any student's major who wants to go into a health profession. All right, now here's gonna be a series of um, slides that you can take your time going through, and I'll just touch on them a little bit. You can stop between slides and think about them more yourself. Didn't wanna to spend too much time talking at you. So one of the things is that I just alluded to is there's no um, particular major that's required for any health graduate program. Having said that, most of our students are science majors, and I think that makes some sense because it's a science-oriented person and often thinks about a health career. There are particular prerequisite courses, which I'll show you an example of in a moment. Um, of course, your GPA needs to be high. All of them have a standardized tests right now that need to be in, within a particular range. So the MCAT is the example of the one for medical schools. Medi uh, health professions expect some clinical experience. And this is one way that we can help students. We can help them find those clinical experiences. And finally, uh, applicants need to have this interest and care for the world in general. And so they need to expand themselves, be real liberal arts type of students and show those health professions that in addition to being able to do science, they are a person who cares about other people. All right, my advice is always to major in what you're passionate about, to keeping in mind that I see over and over students come in or sign us saying they're interested in medical school, but something happens, they change their mind, they find they can't do it, and so you should really pick that major that you can see yourself doing when you're graduated. And I do want to say, don't pick a major to hide a weakness. That is a weakness perhaps in science. Here's that list that I promised you of uh, required courses, at least for medical school. As you can see, it's not a whole lot, right? Um, so medical schools are basing a lot of their um, decisions upon that MCAT, that standardized test. The other professions, dental, vet, optometry, all the other ones have fairly similar looking requirements and sometimes even more requirements, requirements in the sciences. Juniors are the students I'm working or we're working with the most right now because that's when applications could be due at the end of this summer. So when we work with them, uh, one of the people, one of the professors from that committee serves as an individual advisor for students. We help them write their personal statement, an incredibly important writing and essay. We help them prepare for their standardized tests or tell them how to at least prepare. We give them an interview that helps them um, polish up their interview skills and also to uh, point out areas they need to work more on. And we write a committee letter of recommendation before they leave campus. Gaining experience I mentioned is important and um, all of the professions either require or recommend that you get these experiences and you can find those experiences through your own personal network or our graduate and our career and postgraduate development. Uh, Adder Sinus has uh, ways of helping students find these opportunities. Okay, I think this is where I'm gonna zip through things. So health professions of course include physicians, both 
allopathic MD and osteopathic DO. And so if you want to know more about the difference between those two, we'll, we'll talk about that in the future. And I just have some statistics which haven't really changed much from 2017 about uh, GPAs. There are other things besides um, medical school. And so I want to just point out by zipping through them, dentistry, occupational therapy, physical therapy. And I will say as an aside, I see more and more students interested in other things besides being a doctor. Um, I'm included here is an example of occupational therapy uh, uh, prerequisites. And here's what I mean by sometimes being a bigger list than you'd expect from medical school, which is, for example, the two semesters of anatomy and physiology and a semester of abnormal psychology. Those are kind of things that are not uh, within the medical school requirements. So I would always recommend students when they're thinking about a particular field like occupational therapy, physical therapy, physician assistant, that you start doing online uh, research at various schools to see what they say about themselves. So there is a small list that's of required courses that's fairly true for everyone. But as you go through the different um, fields, different schools can tweak those. So I'm telling students, I'm telling you students to start doing some homework online to see what I mean about how the list of required courses could be a bit different. And you can find things online like this, which are summaries of courses, physical therapy, summaries of the kind of courses that different schools require. Don't expect you to read all that. Um, optometry is going to follow fall within our purview. Pharmacy, more and more important. Here's a, an example of prerequisites for pharmacy schools, our local ones. And again, this is a bigger list than what you see for medical school. Physician assistant. It's a two year program, and I think that's what attracts a lot of students to that. And they have fairly um, strict, or I should say, larger requirements than medical school themselves. And here's an example of the kind of courses that are required. And the other thing I want to point out for this particular field is that, and this is for uh, Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, which has a number of different uh, graduate degrees, including uh, PA, not, but not limited to that is that um, you, this is a field in which you have to have healthcare experience. And this is a, on the lower end that I've put a little circle around a little oval saying they need 200 hours, but I've seen up to 800 or 1,000 hours for physician assistant programs. I'll stop a moment here at veterinary medicine. Uh, because here's an example of their prerequisites, a little more extensive than medical school. So this is the University of Pennsylvania. And I want to finish this discussion by saying um, that you can follow a traditional plan, which is you come to college, you do all your prerequisite courses, you communicate with the advisors here in this committee, and by your junior year, you're planning to submit your application during your junior summer. So that's what I mean by three years to apply. But by doing that, you would be ready then after your senior year to start your health careers training, your the graduate school. However, many, many students don't follow this traditional approach. And I had uh, back with Anahi McIntyre and Frank Search um, some examples of students who did, who took more than, more years than that traditional three or four. Medical schools are not looking for the youngest students. They want you to be the best kind of applicant. So sometimes it takes more years to, to show yourself and to show them that you're the kind of person who wants to get into their program. And so those, there's nothing wrong with that. And I encourage it, in fact, and I have this discussion all of the time. 
probably the different health professions like to see these gap years because they know you're an older, more mature person who knows more about the world and knows more about people. So use your time here at Ursinus, if that's where you end up, exploring your passions, and maybe you need to explore those passions for a few years after college, or there are other reasons to take a gap year. And I'm trying to reassure you that that could be the better route for most people, and maybe in the future it will, it will be the route for most people. Okay, I'm trying to anticipate some of your questions. Here's a list of, a partial list of recent acceptances by UC students. So I'll let you pause there if you want to look at that in more depth. And then I'm going to end with students that I personally have known in my, I hate to admit it, my 30 years of being at Ursinus that I still keep in contact with, uh, that were either my researchers or I knew them fairly well and they've been nicely successful. So here's Corianne Stankowitz, who is a bio and a chemistry major. She taught as a uh, chemistry professor for several years after doing her master's before she went back to medical school. And when she went to medical school, she had acceptances to maybe six or seven different places, including the University of Pennsylvania, where she ended up. But she had a very nice list. So here's my... <laughs> some of my support for the idea that gap years or a period between when you graduate and you actually go to medical school can make you a better candidate. She is now still at the University of um, Pennsylvania as a assistant professor of clinical medicine. Mike Adnacki uh, graduated in 2000 and went to Temple Medical School and now is a um, He's a coronary specialist. Alicia Morgans, and I've always put on these when they graduated from Ursinus, uh, which was 2002. She went on to the um, University of Pennsylvania Medical School, and now she's a professor, probably an associate professor by this time, um, in uh, medical oncology. Monique Spencer graduated in 2005, uh, went on to the University of Maryland School of Medicine, is now practicing in Maryland as a gynecologist. Julie Balco, 2008 Ursinus, she went on to the University of Pennsylvania Medical uh, Veterinary School, and she is, well, at this time when I made this slide, she was an assistant professor of anesthesiology at the University of North Carolina. Uh, Dre Smith went to Temple Dental. Jed Elwood is an, is an optometrist. And I end with Akash Shaw, who I, whom I still keep in contact. Just the last week had an email from him. I, I fear for him because he's an emergency room physician in New Jersey during this coronavirus. And so I wish all of our Ursinus healthcare professionals luck in this coming crisis, or this present crisis, sorry. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at this address. If you'd like a phone call, please give me your phone number and tell me some times that are you available to be called and I will try to get back to you or have someone else get back to you. Some of the kind of questions that I know you might have would be things like how many students apply per year. So I'll just give you an example of the students that will be hopefully starting their different medical schools or whatever in 2020 this year. We had about 30 students who have applied using our Ursinus committee. 18 of them were DO or MD. Three of them were dental. Um, about seven or so were physician assistant. Students who used individual letters that I'm aware of are, there was one to vet school this year. There are many more physician assistants that didn't use the committee but have used personal uh, connections of faculty at our sinus. Whether or not a student uses a committee or not, we're still there to help them and advise them. Our acceptance rates is about 70% per year. Um, that can vary between, I'd say, maybe 50 to 95% per, 
admittance um, success was my biggest number. And I will say that this includes all students that I'm aware of who are applying, not just the students with the very top grades. We don't winnow through there, we look at all of our students. Other places to get some of your questions answered are on these websites. I had mentioned that students, you students should be doing your own research about required courses and other requirements. So here are some places to start. Good luck in your choices. Um, feel free to contact me.